Hello, I'm Natasha Hussein, and this is a special edition of Newsfeed. We're focusing the entire program on Palestinian photojournalist Motaz Aziza, who was covering the war in Gaza until January when he had to flee for his own safety. Motaz's images and videos that he posted online provided a raw, unfiltered window into the hardships faced by Palestinians in Gaza. His first-hand reports reach his more than 20 million followers online and beyond. Despite facing threats due to his candid reporting, Mataz continued to document Israel's atrocities in Gaza until relocating to Doha. Here is his journey. Gaza is under a massive attack. The whole area has become a ghost town. Another strike in the street for my neighbors. I don't know what uh, is going to happen next. But believe me, it's not going well. I have no words for you. That is why I've risked my life to show you everything. I filmed everything I'm seeing. I didn't expect my 24 to be like this. Every second, I feel less sure that I will survive. I was gonna die. And I didn't expect to turn even 25. Ooh. I did this for Gaza to show the world without any filters, without any lies. Every moment I capture is for you, to the world to take action. This is the last time you'll see me with this heavy, stinky vest. Uh, I decided to, to evacuate today. Goodbye, guys. Maybe I'll be useful from outside. Today I turned uh, 25. I didn't expect to be a famous by the war. I don't like it, to be honest. Bring me back the people I lost. And bring me back guns. I never forget to say uh, free Palestine. Motaza's journey since evacuating Gaza has been far from easy. The impact of the conflict lingers as he's racked by trauma and survivor's guilt. I spoke to Motaz about his life since leaving the only country he's ever called home and started by asking him what his life is like now. My life today, like it's about, like I'm in a circle, run, running here and there, but uh, the mo what is happening after or how I will be out of the circle when the war stops. So I'm, uh, I didn't went out to take a break until day one. Since I went out, I'm making interviews, meeting official persons. I'm using the, my reach to the millions of people so I can reach the officials who would like to meet me and hear from me so I can make a pressure, make noise. So this is what I said from the moment I left Gaza. I'm going out to make more noise, to, uh, to talk more, to deliver more realities to the world. Of course, so you're using your platform, seeing it's, it's such a powerhouse. You've been posting online recently about how you're more than just a content creator and that sometimes you feel like people don't actually want to know who is the real Motaz. Who are you beyond being Motaz, a 25-year-old from Gaza? And I guess what I want to know, and I'm sure many people online want to know, who is Motaz? How would you describe Motaz Aziza? Regular person, just for his luck, he's living in Gaza in his country under occupation. So I'm, I'm like you, like anyone. And believe me, uh, if there was anyone in my place, my situation, he will do even more. You know? Because uh, when your country is, needs you, you should be there for, 
for her. So I, uh, I did my best. I did, I did this for my, like a duty for my country. I didn't just did this for like for the world or uh, anyone else, just for my Palestine mm. and my beloved city, Gaza. You went through so much in the past couple of months. You lost 18 family members. You've I'm lost more. countless friends. I'm more. I, I can't even imagine what it's been like to go through that. How are you coping now? Uh, till now, I, uh, I'm still, I, I can't process. And uh, don't know what to do or how to think. Uh, like I... I even don't have the ability to talk to someone for a long-term talk. I, uh, um, okay, I'm alive. I, I survived. But what next? Because then I found myself, I'm representing 2.5 million, 2 million people. So uh, I, I'm trying my best to do my duty and the responsibilities that become on me I didn't choose it choose me so uh, I'm just like someone doing my best because uh, there are people who are losing their lives right now exactly and I'm looking here I'm like saying different countries from outside beautiful clean peace and I'm looking to, to Gaza now through TV and the videos from there why should this happen here why are like, you still under occupation till now? Yeah, so even though you've left, the ongoing trauma, it's, it's, it ha doesn't stop. You're still hearing updates from loved ones back home of people dying, people being hurt. Uh, you know, when you, when you lose a lot, you, you start to lose your f true feelings. You stop about acting like a human. Uh, to be honest, I'm, I'm so hard to myself. I, uh, sometimes, I, I, sometimes I think I, I, uh, I forget to take care of myself because if I, I was not well, I would never continue. But uh, the guilt of the survivor, it's, it's real. <laughs> it's, I feel like it's uh, choking me, something's ch choking me, or there's like a huge track on my chest. This mm -hmm. is what I feel. And I can't deal with people like me, like I am Motaz, who was before the 7th of October. So I, and I, at the same time, it's not my, I'm not the, the only one who feels this. All the cousins feel this. So I, uh, but it's not, really, it's not uh, the time to take care of myself. I, I need, I need to, to do more because there are people losing their lives. My, mine is not uh, as much important as uh, you know, other people. No, I'm the same. If uh, they are dying, I need to, yeah, should die because they're your people. And I, the moment I felt that I'm useless there in Gaza, I, okay, I wanted to act more, I want to do more. I don't want to, to be the one who's just went out to watch and to continue his life. No one can continue his life normal. While, while his country is in war, people are getting killed, his people, his family, his friends. So, um, yeah, and anything is around me, is, I feel like it's unreal. Yeah, nothing is real. Yeah. I'm wondering if you feel any support, if any of the overwhelming support online for you helps. I'm sure you get lots of messages from followers. I don't read messages because I... Uh, I care about the people who cares about me, but now I, I, I don't feel like I, I can give any, like showing care or something. Of I course. So I don't answer any, any message because I, I uh, yeah, trying to be fair. If I want to respond to someone, I need to respond to other people because of they course. are all humans. I, I need to show the respect. I have to show respect to them. So I, uh, yeah, I just like doing what, I, what I'm doing. That's During all. the conflict, it's People not a conflict. It's not a conflict. Never called a conflict. Yeah, it's a genocide. Just to be clear. Yes. So you were posting regular updates every day on the atrocities being committed by the Israelis. And 
then when there would be a 24-hour period that there would be no updates for you, everybody online would rally together and be, where is Motaz? Is he okay? How does it feel that there was that overwhelming support for you, care for you, that continues until this day? During the war, I didn't see it well because I was having no connection, how I'll see it. Um, but it was maybe the thing that I uh, make me able to continue more, that there is a lot of people waiting for you, so you, you need to show up and, and show what you, what you cover. And so, yeah, in the end we are all people. And without the people, I'm, I'm nothing. Speaking of people, one of the things that you said before was that you never intended to become a war photojournalist, that you wanted to capture the beauty of your people. Is that still a dream for you today? Yeah, there is there's still some beauty, even if the whole city is destroyed. But uh, it's, a, it's still a dream, even if you and now you, at least you can you went out to be like you can take pictures from even outside, not only your people like as a photographer my, for myself. Any, I uh, but you don't have the power. Yeah, I'm. Um, there is something that move, moves us, is the passion. And when you lose passion, you lose power, you, you lose yourself. For me, I, I don't have any passion for anything, totally. So, uh, yeah, just doing this just because uh, I don't want to, the guilt feeling that keeps yeah, staying with me, that I survived and did nothing, you know, go and do, do something. Yeah. Yeah. What's next for you then? You will obviously continue using your voice since... Yeah, talking more, speaking more, mm -hmm. showing more, meeting more, and uh, maybe taking care of my mental health, maybe. But because uh, if I will take care of my mental health, I need time and I don't have time. Thank you, Motaz, for speaking You're to welcome. us today. And your bravery and uh, for continuing to tell your story all over the world. Thanks so much. Just as Motaz feels it's his duty to speak up about the atrocities committed in Gaza, millions around the world are doing the same. We leave you with some of those voices calling for a free Palestine. We live in cities you'll never see on screen not very pretty but we sure know how to run things when i say free palestine it's not against anyone it actually means we should protect everyone It's a complicated situation at all. I think it's black and white, and you have a choice to see it or not, and I hope you see it. And the people who have families who are going through this and people who are there. I want all my followers and my peers to sit on the right side of history. I want them to make a decision that is larger than them. I want them to make an unselfish one. I want them to make an obvious one. And I just hope that they choose to, to do the right thing. Free, free Palestine has been woven into my DNA from the beginning of time, but do you know who I'm proud of? You, the people with 0% Palestinian blood who have lifted their voice. It's scary to get involved in somebody else's fight, but you've had bravery. You shed the light. You've lifted your voice when the people of Gaza need you most. I left, but I'm in the tree.